Hey guys, it's Altaki here. Welcome back to another video. So I would like to introduce you my home theater PC. But before I show you what my home theater PC feels like, I was originally going to use my Vio half top as my home theater PC because if in case you guys remember the Vio machine, I had to originally use it as a server and now I had to use it as a home theater PC which is something like this. Yeah, it's a Vio half top. It's not gonna be a laptop anymore. I'm gonna use it as a server, so it's time to go back to the square one because you know, internet stuff has been intensive in the modern world. So, what machine I had to use as a home theater PC? Well, it's one of these. Now, some of you be like, but where's the keyboard? Well, I took it out because it needs more airflow. It needs more airflow for the fan to breathe in. There's a reason why rubber feet is on the palm rest. It's because I had, I want to use the laptop that way. Hence why I have to move the power button over here. Because that's very pointless to have a power button up here. It's a very, very sketchy Jerry rig mod here <laughs> yeah i'm probably gonna tape that up because it's looking pretty dangerous here with pcb exposed on but anyway let's have a look at the laptop here oh should i say half top home theater pc <laughs> you guys recognize this laptop here yeah in case you guys don't know i i used to use this laptop the asus apt5 vj laptop before i had to retire this thing and replace it with my legion laptop that i bought back in well, i think Aug august 2020 my Asus laptop has been serving me well over the last six years, oh, seven years. My bad. Anyway, let's have a look at the left side here. On the left side, we have a charging port, a cooling vent, a VGA port, an HDMI port, an Ethernet port, which the flap is missing here, and two USB 3.0 ports. On the front, we have a indicator lights as well as the SD card reader, which I don't use it because I had to use this machine that way. I don't even know why. On the right side, we have two audio jacks. One of them is headphones and one of them is for microphone and a USB 2.0 port and an optical drive which is missing, but I'm probably gonna replace that with the hard drive caddy. On the back, we got nothing except with the battery slot. On the battery slot, we have a wireless, wireless antenna and of course, we got a power button here that I move. Here, this is absolutely generate. And yeah, looking on the b bottom, well, should I say the top side now? Let's have a look at the inside of the machine, shall we? Okay, let me open up the toolbox. So, what does this thing have? It has i5, 6 gigs of RAM, and the SGSD drive. And some of you might be wondering, but you should have bought an SSD. Um, yeah, you're right. But I don't think I have budget for an upgrade like this. So, yeah. <laughs> so I had to cope with it. Now, many of you or already move on to SSD because hard drive as a boot drive is very, very slow and should not be used in 2022. Yeah, I will probably gonna put some money onto the SSD upgrade for the home theater PC like this. Or should I say media PC? Whatever I don't want to call. And yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and set this up and get back to you. Alrighty, everything is hooked up and ready to go. And yeah, it's all plugged into... Remember this? This is the Sharp Aquas something something rather. This is a 19 inch LED TV, but remember that I cannot take this TV years and years ago. Since mid-August of this year, I think I got, got this thing for free. So yay, free TV. Anyway, I was originally going to use this as a secondary monitor the third monitor for my laptop setup over here oh my god my desk is so crammed i need to get a new one seriously anyway since i had to use it this way i had to move the the power button from the palm rest to the where the battery is supposed to go so i can simply power the machine on without having to worry about flipping it over and powering it on which is going to be a major hassle anyway i have this thing hooked up to this little tiny keyboard touchpad combo this is an off-brand stuff made in china and it does have it does have a clicky sound which feels like a remote control than than an actual keyboard maybe i should have bought a wireless keyboard touchpad combo but yeah that's too big let me go ahead and turn the tv on and boot it up let me go ahead and enter the bios first so as you can see this machine has an i5 3210m and six gigabytes of RAM. This is a this is on the latest version of the BIOS. And the boot drive is the HGSD drive. Nothing much to show here. No optical drive. 
anything like that. As you can see, this machine is running Windows 8.1 Pro with Media Center, and some of you might be like, You should have put Windows 10 or 11 on this machine. No, I have the same reason why, why I don't feel like putting a modern operating system on a home theater PC. Because since Windows 10 came out, they removed Windows Media Center. Oh god. Oh god, not the blue Zenith number. Since Windows 10 came out, they remove, completely remove Windows Media Center unless there's a work workaround with this thing. And yeah, now I cannot use Windows Media Center on that machine. And some of you might be like, Use HBNC or Cody. Um, no, I, I want to feel the old nostalgic feeling of Windows Media Center. <laughs> yeah, I haven't used Windows Media Center since... I don't know, when I first tried using Vista. Windows Media Center came out since Windows XP Media Center Edition, I believe. But I think I'm correct, because the first Media Center came out since Windows XP. Let me go ahead and lock me in, and it should boot straight to the Windows Media Center. One eternity later. It's gonna take a while. Come on. There we go. And yeah, I didn't get the Windows Media Center thing above here because we don't have that settings on Windows 8.1. Yeah, see? We don't get that settings here. So yeah, I did find a workaround for this issue is that all I have to do is to open shell startup, open up shell startup, and put Windows Media Center shortcut on here. And yes, this is the script that I have to create to trigger the Windows Media Center hotkey once Windows, Windows Media Center is active. So I reprogrammed the right ALT key to get to the home screen. So let's see if I hit the right ALT. And there we go. Anyway, I'm gonna close Windows Media Center for now and check system properties. God, the touchpad's horrible. Windows 8.1 Pro with Media Center, i5 3210M, 6 gigs of RAM, 64 bit operating system. I'm gonna keep using Windows Media Center because because I just wanna feel the nostalgic stuff again. But however, there are a couple of noticeable things that was missing in Windows Media Center is that it cannot play MKV files out of the box. So the workaround is to install the KLite codec stuff and that should work just fine. During the initial setup of my Media Center PC, I started off with this thing and I test out the media playback capabilities on YouTube. It just doesn't cut it, even with H264 or 5. Oh my god, look at the dance. What? This is a pretty heavy box. Alright. Alright, we're gonna open the box and we're gonna see what happens. Oh no. It almost chugged the APU so hard with 480p. And one of the reasons why I think it struggles so much on 1080p 60 frames per second is... You guessed it, it's an AMD APU that was inside of this thing. Ooh, <laughs> what a joke. But yeah, the install that was in this thing was originally on this machine. The install works perfectly, but there might be hiccups later on. So yeah. And I have some plugins installed like uBlock Origin, which blocks ads and return YouTube dislike because YouTube made some very stupid change. H264 of 5. Okay, let me pull out my channel here. So yeah, I do have a YouTube video running and I have stats for nerds on to monitor what's going on here. And actually, it can actually play a YouTube video perfectly at 1080p 60 frames per second. Oh, 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 I didn't mean to do that. Yes, this video was playing in 1080p 60 frames per second, but this manky old thing cannot because of how much YouTube struggles on this machine, at least on 720p and 1080p 60 frames per second. I don't even understand. Maybe it's just too intensive for this bio machine here with AMD APU. I think YouTube is out of questions for this bio machine. So yeah, playing local files on, on the bio machine does work perfectly fine, but on Media Center, it 1080p 60 frames per second video just, just simply did not work. Speaking of did not work, I also use this machine. <coughs> Speaking of did not work, I also use my media PC as my Spotify machine. So I can simply listen to whatever music that I want to listen and leave it there. But unfortunately, I cannot play that music because copyright. But yeah, it's a mix of both media consumption machine and Spotify machine. Whenever I want to use my media PC, all I have to do is to turn this media, s media center setup here and and just being chilling. Being chilling. With, while watching anime. Like, like say, Bochi the Rock, for example. 
So yeah, that's what the purpose of my media PC was. But it's all set up with two of these boxes. We have a MX4000 case box for the big speaker and my Legion laptop box. Yeah, that was so scuff, I swear to God. But anyway, that's about it for my media PC. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it down and I'm probably gonna do an upgrade for the media PC later on and be done with it. And I'm gonna turn the TV off and end the video here. So that's gonna be about it for my media PC tour. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for future uploads like this. And make sure to support me on both Kofi and Patreon at the links down below. And I'll catch you all next time. The Teltaku signing out.